Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, you need to do a double numbers. Oh. <laughs> nice, to be oh. so, nice to be such a popular football club. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's the this same. This is all on air now. Yeah, they dragged you out and go anyway. That's yeah, unlucky for you. Yeah, well, no one lost me at home, so. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice day for it. To be fair, it's yeah, a nice yeah, day for it. Right, Gary, do you want to kick off? Thank you for your time, Merry Christmas. Thank you, the same to you. Have you got a mini Christmas injury crisis? It's, it's a strange word to use, crisis. It's, it, I mean, our squad's small, that's the, the first thing. And the unfortunate thing is that the injuries we picked up, I mean, we, we had seven going into the weekend, that's with Camaras having fallen sick. He's, he's now recovered from that sickness. Um, but the, the other six, of course, included Mamadou Saka, who was suspended. But the strange thing is they're all in the same positions. You know, Mamadou uh, couldn't play, and, of course, then you've got Scott Dan, you've... You've got Gary Cahill, you've got Joel Ward, and all these players really are playing in the similar positions. And it's the same with Andros Townsend and Jeffrey Schlupp. They're two players who can cover the same position. So the unfortunate part with our injury situation has not been very well spread out. Yes. Um, but I thought that the players have, are covering exceptionally well. We, we moved Cheku uh, Kuyate to centre-back, and he had another excellent game at centre-back, where we, of course he can play. And we've got people like James McCarthy and Max Mayer to bring into the team in midfield. So, in actual fact, we covered it very well. Um, it's more, I suppose, the fear for us of if this continues or if we pick up more injuries, how we're going to get through the next games when you've got three games in four days. But I'll, I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. Well, I guess in an ideal world, Kyoto wouldn't have played the whole 90 minutes, would you? Well, he, before the game, he was complaining a little bit about a a slight strain in, 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 in the groin area, but uh, yeah, if we would had more options, the chances are he might have been one that we'd have allowed to rest for that game, but we, we're not in that comfortable position where we can say, well, look, there's lots of games coming up, give this player who's maybe suffering from a little bit of fatigue a rest. I'm afraid we have to push them out to play, and I thought they did that exceptionally well on Saturday. So uh, any of them, I mean, Andros is the nearest to coming back, is he other than... No, he's a long uh, way off. So Kale, Dan, Schluck, Ward, all no good for Well, Dan's a strain, and I mean, normally they're several weeks. Uh, he's, he's, it's been a week now since he since he picked up the, the strain, so I would think he might be no more than a couple of weeks, depending on how bad the strain is. Um, Gary Cahill and the others, they're predicting it won't, it won't be in the coming matches, that's for sure, more likely towards the end of the month, if, if we're lucky, even then. And when it comes to Jeffrey Schlupp and Andros Townsend, it could be even longer. You mentioned the other side of the squad. Obviously, you know, no one's about panic buying, but does this influence your thinking about January? Not really, because, you know, our thinking going into the summer transfer window was very much the same as it is today. It hasn't changed, so there's no question of panic buying. But it's obviously not a good situation when you... You know, at the weekend, we had three, three players from the under-23 squad who'd never played in the first team and Conor Wickham who's not played in the first team in the Premiership for I think it's three years now uh, almost three years you know that's not an ideal situation you know I hear about the other clubs with their injury problems but when I look at their team and their benches I don't see that type of situation we found ourselves in but once again fantastic credit to the players that you know we, we use Max just at the last 10 minutes of the game and the 12 players that played in the game dealt with it very, very well, and I thought we were unlucky not to come away with a good result. So, so to clarify, if, if you don't mind, if you can find the right player in the right position defensively, then it's a yes? Well, not, uh, to be fair, the, the, it depends, I suppose, with the injury situation at the back. We have to be careful, because we don't want to be just bringing players in, and then these players at the end of January are fit again, and suddenly we had a situation earlier in the season where we had five centre-backs for two positions and I was leaving three good players out suddenly you go down to one centre-back who's available those four will come back so we have to be very careful it's not so much we're going to have to get through this period there's no question of that but there's no doubt in my mind and I don't think the clubs mind either that the players that we were maybe looking to bring into the club in the summer and improve our squad with they are still our targets, but they're not necessarily all centre-backs. So, West Ham, 
uh, haven't played for almost two weeks. Is that the benefit or, or not? I would say at this time it probably is. I mean, I think it's not. It's, it's more like ten days than, than, than two weeks. They missed the weekend fixture. I would have thought that going into this difficult period now, because they have the same fixture congestion as the rest of us, I would have thought they might be quite happy to have had a little bit longer to prepare the players and maybe get one or two players who are not, you know, one hundred percent fit a little bit fitter, so I would think they're in a, in a happier situation going into the game in that respect. Um, I don't see any real disadvantage at this time of year, missing a game and having to wait three days or so for the next one. I don't think that's a disadvantage. If, only, if anything, I would have seen it as an advantage myself. But having said that, I'm pretty sure that Manuel Pellegrini will be aware of the importance of the game and the level of difficulty just as much as I am. London Derby, I guess Dad's Derby as well, a couple of wildly experienced <laughs> managers, the two most experienced, if I can put it that way, managers in the Premier League. Yeah, I, don't, I must say, I don't ever really think about the opposing manager. Um, obviously, I think the the Premier League is very fortunate to have so, so many good managers. You know, every team we play against is well prepared, well organised, well drilled, know exactly what they're doing. So I never actually think in terms of, well, who is the manager in this next game? I always think about what the team is, what the players are, how the team plays, what they're good at, what we've got to contend with. And I allow other people to sort of come up with statistics about how many games I would have played against the opposing manager and whether I've won them or lost them. Quite strange that quite a few of those opposing managers who've been at Manchester United, Manchester City and Liverpool seem to have a better record against me than I have. I've not quite worked that one out yet. I was trying to be polite at this Christmas and not mention age, but it's the oldest manager versus the second oldest. Is it? OK, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I think we're looking all right on that, to be fair. When I see Manuel, I don't... The first thing when I see him appear on the TV that strikes me is not his age, but how well he's looking and what a fantastic head of hair he has. And I'm certain there'll be lots of people a lot younger than him looking enviously at his looks and uh, the way he's kept himself fit and well over the years. And uh, age won't play a part. He'll be as uh, nervous and as active and as prepared for the game as I am and as any 25-year-old will be. Am I saying exactly the same about you and how long you're wearing? Well, thank you, thank you, Gary. Very kind of you. This won't get on the screen, by the way, so we, so we like it. Yeah. As we're talking about the fact that you've got all this experience and you know doing really well despite the, the injury problems, any progress at all on your contract talks? No, we haven't talked about it for a while now. I mean, uh, I don't, I don't have any reason to to doubt that the intention from the club is still the same. But we haven't had any discussions. To be fair. Doug Friedman's been very, very busy running around preparing for the January transfer window. Steve Parrish has spent some time in America. So, you know, really, we're all getting on with our jobs and they know that if they want me to stay, I'm prepared to do so. Do you like the Christmas period? I mean, professionally speaking. I quite enjoy the training side of it and being around the, the, the team. You know, it's, I don't think I would thank you for long days at home on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day and Boxing Day. So I enjoy coming in and working with the players. The actual matches themselves, somewhat less so, because I think it's very difficult or very harsh to ask players to play at the level we play at with a day's rest in between or two days rest in between. So it's you're not going to see the best of your team and probably not the best of the opposing teams because it's too much to ask. Uh, it's, it's simply physically too much for the players. So I don't enjoy that part of it very much. And also, of course, it's a very dangerous period because it's a make or break period. If if things don't go your way in that period, it can be injuries, can be fatigue, can be you know the fact that you've been a bit unlucky, suddenly you find yourself uh, looking up the table again rather than down the table which we'd prefer to do so I don't enjoy that side of things but I don't dislike it otherwise and of course I fully understand that we're entertainers we're here to give the public what they really want and what they want is a full Christmas programme they 
they enjoy it. Boxing Day, Saturday, New Year's Day, that's fantastic for them. So we have to accept that, but it's not ideal. I mean, in an ideal world, you'd want a bit more rest in between. And relatively speaking, always dangerous, of course, to say this, but compared to that run of five games you had a bit earlier in the season, relatively speaking, on paper, it's not the worst possible Christmas period, fixtures-wise. No, no, we got those games played, didn't we? And didn't get many points from when we played all the top teams and luckily since then we've picked up a few points and it was our first defeat in, in five I think against Newcastle and it was a, a game where we could so easily have come away unbeaten too so yeah in that respect we've not been un, unlucky and we've had the good fortune of course of being given a home game on Boxing Day uh, rather than the away game because that that's not easy for teams I think to leave their families on Christmas Day evening and spend the night in a hotel. Just a final point from me, if I may. Um, don't want to go deeply into racism because we've done it before so mm. often with you, but some suggestion now that the government should intervene somehow in football. Would you support that or, or not? I'd have to see, I suppose, what the proposed intervention was going to be. I think that it is a social problem, quite simply. I mean, it's... We certainly are hard hit in football, but you know we don't we don't get too many instances in football of players being accused of racism one against the other. The racism, unfortunately, is coming from the terraces, and uh, you know with the best will in the world, and clubs need to take responsibility, and they do. But it's not easy to police sixty thousand people and to make certain that a few haven't got in with bad intentions. And some of the suggestions that are put forward, they're quite draconian and people have to think what the possible repercussions of those draconian measures what might be. You know, if teams are walking off left, right and centre, that will certainly give the FA plenty of things to think about and the Premier League. So I'll wait and see what, what comes up. All, all I can do, like any right-minded person, is deplore the fact that there are people still in our society who, who feel it necessary to make racist remarks and to take it out on innocent footballers into the bargain. Um, it's a sad situation and I can only hope that a solution will be found and in the meantime, we, in my opinion, are going to say every week the same things. We deplore it, we don't think it's right, but I don't think many of us will come up with the ideal solution either. Certainly I can't. Nice to speak to you. Thank you. The same. Sorry, thank the same. You. Okay. That concludes.